Well, what's I, your verdict, Mark? Very good. <laughs> I just, <laughs> just, I just came to yeah, you. Yeah, you sent me that message. When you've got, you know, Robert Downey Jr. and Robert Duvall as, you know, joint top liners and you have a supporting cast that is Billy Bob Thornton, uh, Vera Farmiga, Vincent D'Onofrio, I mean, really sort of good players. You expect something classy, as indeed you do by the running time, because the running time seems to say, for your consideration. Um, the, th the problem with the film is it, despite the extraordinary cast, it never gets itself out of the ordinary. The other problem is that it being directed by David Dobkin, who is, I think is probably best known for doing The Wedding Crashes, it is tonally kind of all over the place. It can't quite... Dis I mean, there's a there's a number of different elements. On the one hand, there's a John Grishamy type uh, thriller narrative. On the other hand, it's sort of on Golden Pond. There is actually, you know, a sequence in which they do go out and sit in a boat uh, on a pond. It's a bit Doc Hollywood, you know, when he gets, uh, you know, he's a city guy and he gets become and he's got to stay in a small town. And he actually, the small town sort of starts to work his uh, work its magic. It's a little bit, you said yourself, a uh, Osage, Osage, uh, August Osage County. It is a Osage, bit. isn't it? Not Os Doesn't matter. Fine, it's August Osage County. It's a little bit country. It's a little bit rock and roll. It doesn't quite know what it is. And what that means is you end up looking at the individual elements of it and going, well, the sequence that you referred to in which um, Robert Downey Jr. and Robert Duvall have a, have a sort of strange bonding moment when his, his father, who is clearly ill, suddenly becomes incontinent. I thought was, becomes incontinent. I thought was, was done really well. And that moment in the film, I thought, oh, OK, that's a... That was really well handled. It was sort of sensitive, but it was funny, and it was, and it seemed very, very realistic. I've read other people say of that sequence, "I hated that scene because that was the give me an Academy Award scene." Now, no. and I no, no, I disagree entirely. I think it's, I think that that was the heart of the movie. I think, funnily enough, in that one scene of the father and son who they don't talk to each other and they don't get on, and yet suddenly they're brought together by the fact that his body is failing and the parent, uh, the carer cared for roles are being reversed. I thought that scene worked really well. Actually, I could have seen a whole movie like that. Meanwhile, you've got this John Grishamy legal thriller, which really is kind of off on a whole other tangent. There's a dead guy and there's a car with some blood on the thing and the judge is being, he, maybe he's gonna manslaughter or maybe it's gonna be murder, but he doesn't remember doing any of it. And, it, and so there's all that going on. Then there's the whole other movie about him going back to the diner and meeting up with Vera Farmiga, who's the girl from home who he sort of knew, but then he went off and then he left her and she's now back in the hometown. And then, in the middle of that, there's a sort of slightly wisecracking Robert Downey Jr. comedy. You, I mean, you said this, that, he, that he, he almost he makes a stance or he pulls a face when you, you, can, you, you can know tell. he's about to do that yeah. thing. If he's walking in the room and he's got that kind of Robert Downey Jr. look on, you think, OK, we're going to do a little... Uh, you can do a bit of that. bit of rom-com. Yeah. Yeah, but if he comes in with a serious face, he's going he's to do some judge uh, sequences. Yeah. So, yeah, it felt and, a little bit uneven. So, consequently, you know, it has... All these warring elements, they're, they, they never reconcile. You never really feel that David Dobkin has got a strong hand on the tiller and knows exactly what movie he's making. It's almost like, as the, that email you read out before so brilliantly said, they've sort of thrown a little bit of everything in and seen how much of it they can get away with. I think Robert Downey Jr. is very watchable. I think Robert Duvall is very watchable. I think Vera Farmiga is always very watchable. But I think they appear to be in different movies. And as we get more and more as we get closer to the verdict, the courtroom cliches really, really start to pile up. And uh, the, to, to the point that, that there's actually a point in the courtroom sequence when they start basically having a sort of a family discussion of the kind that in a real court, they just go, no, sorry, we're in a court. You can cut that out right now. And it's funny because it's sort of... It felt up until that point like it was going to, you know, keep its keep its hand played sort of closely to its chest. And then it just goes full on, you can't handle the truth nonsense. So it is a game of many parts. And in the middle of it somewhere, there is an 89 minutes movie, which I quite like, about Robert Duvall and Robert Downey Jr. finding some kind of gruff parental paternal acceptance. All around it is all these other things going on that are alternately rom com schmaltzy, grishamy, thrillery, and they just don't gel together. So strong performances, strong supporting cast, total mess of a movie, but with anything that's on screen for that long, with that much talent, there are going to be things that work. And I think it, that sequence that you that you raised with him, that sequence of them together when his father, um, you know, is losing control of his body, I thought, actually, that was really well done. And you kind of thought, well, why don't you make that movie? Why don't you make that film? Because that you can do.